So what you are seeing is a, a little bit of a pan along of the Yerkes Observatory, which is the still the world's largest uh, refracting telescope, uh, as well as a building that's a real sort of Beaux Arts confection that was built by the University of Chicago in 1895 to 97. And uh, about a decade later, an Olmsted design landscape uh, was installed on what is now our 50 acre surroundings. So you get a little bit of sense of the building. Uh, we obviously can't show you 50 acres of land right this second, but um, this is a landscape that over the years sort of slowly uh, degraded and uh, shrubs and beds and other plantings were lost. Uh, and so our board and our funders are working hard to restore this landscape over the coming uh, year and years. Uh, and in a moment, you're gonna hear from Tom Nichols, who is one of our board members, the vice chair of our board, and has really taken ownership of the landscape piece of this. So I'm gonna lead you inside here. All right, we're gonna go in and just give you a quick view of the interior of this lovely building. And then we're gonna walk down to what is uh, a small exhibit about Olmsted and the Olmsted firm that we just opened that we are using with our uh, donors and with some of the groups that we're bringing in for tours. We are not yet open to the public, but hope to be uh, hosting public tours as soon as this winter. Um, so we're now gonna just walk inside. I'm gonna take the lead here. So there may be a small pause while the uh, video shifts from cell to Wi-Fi. Can everyone still hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Excellent. Just making sure. <laughs> One never knows these days. Uh, just give you a little quick sense of the interior here, which is this door. Um, there are uh, three active telescopes here that are robotic telescopes and this beautiful 50-acre Olmsted landscape. So we're going to walk down this way. Um, and I will say, uh, before coming here, I actually was in Buffalo running uh, a museum called the Birchfield Penny. Uh, and so know uh, Stephanie Crockett and the crew in Buffalo really well. And excited to have another Olmsted uh, connection here uh, with y'all today. So come on down. I'm going to go catch Tom. So before Tom jumps in, we're just going to show you, uh, this is the original Olmsted plan, uh, just printed out here. And so this is what we are using to guide our efforts uh, to sort of evaluate what is here, what is missing, uh, what is, uh, you know, need to be replaced or restored. So uh, that's work that's uh, just gotten underway and is ongoing. Uh, so we're really excited about that. So with that, we're going to peek in here to where Tom is, and he's going to take it over from here. Tom? Thanks, Dennis. So May 1st of 2020, we got the keys of the observatory. And at the time, we knew an awful lot about the great refractor, the big telescope. We knew a little bit about the building, and we knew next to nothing about the grounds, the landscape. Uh, we heard like Olmsted, so we really began learning a lot about Olmsted and the firm. And as Dennis just mentioned, we found the 1906 landscape plan, and uh, that was really kind of the start. We we're really excited, and in, in, uh, uh, just to bring a sense of uh, bringing it back home, Arlene Levy found a note that uh, J.C. Olmsted wrote to his wife on October 9th, 1905. Visited Yerkes Observatory to do site analysis. Went with Hutchison and Ryerson. The observatory is handsome. It has been designed by Henry Ives Cobb. It was completed in eight years. It stands in a big open field with various wobbly cart paths worn across it in short cut paths and telephone poles. The immediate surroundings are rather forlorn, but there are woods on the borders on two sides and fine views across the lake. YMCA camp nearby uses field for athletics. The land for the observatory was given to the university as part of a land booming scheme. And while the area is large enough, it's not properly distributed. And the big building, considered considering its purposes, ought to have more land about it north and west. Land scheme seems to have been a failure. So on that bright note, we then took a look at the landscape as it has been uh, transformed this forlorn piece of property 
into something that's really quite incredible. So I mentioned um, uh, Hutchinson. Hutchinson was a Chicago industrialist um, and also was a, a trustee of the University of Chicago and headed the Buildings and Crowns uh, Group. So not only did he have a lot of projects at the University of Chicago, he also uh, brought uh, Homestead up to Lake Geneva and landscape many of the, the large states. So we see that networking was, was alive back in the 1800s. Um, so with this background, exactly what did we inherit? So uh, starting last summer, the, uh, we formed a volunteer corps, the Olmstead Committee, to go through and start tagging by identifying and then tagging every tree we could. As Dennis mentioned, we have over 50 acres and uh, under the watchful eye of Brianna Frank and Arborist, uh, we took to it, but we didn't get more than about half of the property identified. The second parallel effort uh, was to use a drone to do a digital flyover of the entire property, which we then overlaid to the map that Dennis showed you a few minutes ago, the 1906 landscape plan. And it was amazing how the two matched up. So by the end of 2020, we had a pretty good idea of what remained of the original plan and where our planting opportunities were. Um, at one point, uh, we had five champion trees, the largest trees of any species uh, in Wisconsin. Today, one remains and it's a yellowwood tree. Um, uh, so winter of last year, uh, consisted of trimming, tree cutting, and fundraising to get us ready for uh, what would happen this year. Spring of 2021, we over on the, uh, we learned about, about a very important uh, concept of recreate versus restore. And Dennis used the word restore, and we typically use that because it resonates clearly with, with people of what we're trying to do. Uh, but uh, recreation says, how are you going to adapt? So uh, four ideas, so plan included planting of buckthorn as well as five other invasive species. So if we were to restore the landscape, it would mean planting the buckthorn. If we're gonna recreate, which means we are eliminating all the buckthorn we can, which as many of you know, is a long-term project. And planting something that has similar characteristics, similar height, similar, uh, Leaf kind of structure, sort of uh, what the landscape architect wanted to do. Second, uh, disease and insect resistance. Part of the original plan included American elms, and American elms were wiped out by Dutch elm going, where they're developing American elms that are resistant to Dutch elm and elm bark beetle. And so we are participating in planting 20 American elms this spring. Um, Chestnuts. Uh, we joined the American Chestnut Foundation and planted a small grove of chestnuts uh, that we hope uh, will take off and, and be hardy. And then finally, climate change. What, what will grow and what will not grow in our environment in the future? So those are really the three things that are defining it. We've also found out that there's something called rehabilitating. We don't really know how that fits in with recreate and restoration, but I'm sure we'll find out a lot more in the future. So um, our plan is very detailed on what plants to grow where. One of the things that we don't know is uh, when you look at the landscape plant, it's uh, specifically this tree in this location, but the space between the trees is just open and unidentified. So in a view that have big city parks, we know that I'm sure that was grass because we can get trampled by citizens and that was the reason for the park but in places like ours was it grass was it meadow was it some kind of prairie and more importantly how would the Olmsted firm have evolved what they were doing today from the 1890s and so uh, our crew this year has been incredibly busy as you can see uh, as Matt is showing you the Olmsted room uh, we've got the uh, Room open homestead. You can slightly see through uh, the window if you can the greater mix, which is a wonderful view. 
up as you approach the observatory. Uh, we have been planting green gardens, uh, rooted prairie plants. Uh, in June, we installed a one and a half acre prairie meadow, uh, much as I talked about with the grass and uh, meadow discussion. October 9th, anybody who's in the area, we'd love to have you join us. And we install uh, native perennials in a 6,000 square foot test bed at the front. And uh, we plan to replant approximately 100 trees this fall. And this winter, we'll begin the design and build of the trail system. In short, uh, we feel that uh, we've really uh, accomplished a lot uh, over the last year and a half. But at the same time, we've really only stretched the surface. And uh, uh, a big thank you goes out to an awful lot of people that have helped us accomplish what we have in a very short period of time. Dee Dee and her team, uh, the whole NAOP network has been just wonderful in offering ideas. Carly Levy, John Notes, Harper Andes, Roy Diblick, uh, who some of you may know, Jeff Epping, James Jensen, and uh, Rihanna Frank. And for all those who I should have mentioned that I didn't, I apologize and I thank you. So uh, with that, Dee, we'll turn it back to you. Thanks so much for having us. That was absolutely terrific.